small wave. Really nice turnout again. Uh, there's, there's a bunch of seats here in the front. These are the most comfortable. Or if you want to stand at the drinks, that works as well. So we've got quite a big bunch. I think we put up about 160 chairs, so nice bunch. I think it's uh, about 20% bigger than last time, so we're growing nicely. Um, for the people that haven't seen this space yet, this is the Wharton Capital. They're one of the sponsors of this event. Uh, if you want to rent this space, you got to talk to Paul over there with the cap, the guy that's waving, taking some pictures. Uh, it's a really nice space for events, but um, they also have some hot desks uh, left. Something else, if you are interested in a free one-day pass for a, for, a, for a desk, check out the space for one day. Go to Paul and he'll give you a free ticket. Uh, so for freebies, tap him on the shoulder. Um, other sponsor that we have is uh, General Assembly. Uh, they're based in the work capital, actually, whereas the General Assembly guys are sitting here. Uh, they have some really cool courses going on. One of them uh, is going to take place over the holidays. And one is, uh, that's, it's a front-end uh, developer course that's going on as well. Um, in general, they have a lot of cool stuff going on. So if you're interested in, uh, in some cool courses, talk to the General Assembly guys. They're paying the drinks, so I think we should uh, thank them for that, it's, it's really great. Um, I'm Peter from Pi, uh, the third sponsor of this event and organizer of this event. So the, the goal of this event, I always want to repeat for every event, uh, because as Pi founder and as, as a company here that is very product focused, this sort of um, th product thinking and user thinking as a company, when we just arrived here in Singapore and set up, it's something that we didn't see enough and we wanted to sort of evangelize. Uh, so this crazy focus, obsession with products, right? With product management, um, iterative, uh, agile, all of the above, very, de very design focused. That's something that we felt as a company wasn't, uh, it wasn't very clear for a lot of people what that was and what companies that work this way are all about. Uh, that's why we're organizing this event. So it's basically to blend in with product makers and, and meet up people that are super passionate about building great products, right? Rather than outsourcing something, uh, having it built quickly and do a PR blast and expecting something to be huge, it's more about put your head down and just iterate, do a lot of research, check your data, check your usage, uh, make your product better, right? It's, a, it's more of a marathon, it's a cliche, but it's more of a marathon. Um, so compared to last event, this event, we have a, a slightly different setup. Uh, last event we had a few talks, very traditional. Uh, some of them were quite long. Um, so at this event we're going to try something very, very different. We uh, invited six lesser known startups uh, or products. And they're going to do a super short demo, like three minute demo. Um, let me see if I can bring them up. Here they are. Uh, hopefully, well I think some of them you probably know. It's going to be a super short demo, three to four minutes. I'm going to cut off if it takes longer. And then we're going to have uh, two judges, panelists, experts, whatever you, you guys are, uh, talking through for five minutes. And then we go on to the next. So it's going to be very uh, sort of practical. This is what product does. This is what it's about. And then we're going to pick it apart quickly and then do six of those. So it should be interesting. So the two uh, judges or panelists or whatever you want to call it, then we're going to place on these really uncomfortable chairs right here. Uh, Nav, who's uh, working for Book. If you want to hire a super talented design consultant HD, go talk to Book. They, they work for a lot of big customers here. They built some really cool apps. Uh, and Michael Blakey. So Nav, I'm hoping he will give some feedback on product and design and sort of execution. Um, Michael Blakey, who is a very active angel investor and uh, who's been very successful in his previous life as an entrepreneur, uh, hopefully he can shed some light on sort of the feasibility of the product. Like, like is it scalable? What's the value proposition? All this kind of stuff. So there's there will be two angles for each product. So that's uh, roughly the setup. Um, as usual, uh, take a lot of pictures and tweet them. We have freebies. We have product on T-shirts. Um, We'll have four of them this time, and then also uh, the work capital was kind enough to have four uh, weekly hot desk passes. 
um, for the best picture. So we'll pick them out tonight or tomorrow, and we'll reach out over Twitter and let you know hey, you want a t-shirt and a, a hot desk uh, pass. So go ahead and tweet, take pictures, and share with these hashtags, the word capital uh, and product hunt. Just mention them. So I would like to invite the judges to uh, take their places. Uh, the first presenter is going to be Parrot, right? Come on stage. Hey guys. Try to full screen. There you go. Hey guys. Um, I'm really privileged to be here. So uh, my name is Jackie. I'm from uh, Parrot, also from Balco Post uh, with digital lifestyle publications. But today, uh, we'd like to introduce you to Parrot, right? So Parrot is a very simple tool that allows to do to do three things. Number one, discover trending content in Singapore, right? Number two, add call to actions to the trending content. Number three, schedule it on social media, right? So uh, to put it visually, right? So number one, so on Parrot, what you can do, right, is Parrot index all the publications in Singapore and rank them by variety. So every single hour, we update them. And when you go to Parrot, you'll know that at this point of time, which article is trending in Singapore right now. So it's fantastic for uh, social media. So what you can do on Parrot is you can search by keywords. So for example, you can search by travel and you know what travel related content is trending right now. You can search by date as well. Um, today, yesterday, past week, past month or past year. And you can search by publications. So for example, uh, by Straits Times, Share News Asia or uh, Mothership or Balkan Post or whatever. And it will sort the results by the virality. Uh, one more thing about Parrot Search is that it will, there's a uh, notification feature that pings you whenever there's a trending article in Singapore right now. So that's number one. Number two, uh, once you discover the trending content right now, right, what do you do? As brand owners or social media owners, right, what you do is you copy the link and paste it on your Facebook page, right? But the thing is, Parrot allows you to add call to actions to those articles that you're sharing allow you to leverage and get uh, benefits out of it. So before Parrot, you simply share this article, right? With Parrot, you can add a layer of call to action to it, which could be, uh, you know, check out our uh, uh, event space, download our apps, or like our Facebook page, right? And obviously the third thing about Parrot is that once you add the call to actions to the links that you're sharing already, you can schedule it on your, uh, through Parrot and uh, push it through your social media pages. So that's very simple. Let me just show you the demo, right? Uh, okay, so basically this is Parrot. Parrot is P-R-R-T dot C-O. Uh, this is our search feature. So basically what you can do is you can enter the keyword, basically let's say travel, or if you leave out the keyword, uh, you can actually search and you'll crawl through all the publications and list the articles by variety. So we know for sure that today, this article by Straits Times is the most shared article, and this results is sorted by every single hour, right? Uh, so once you discover all the trending content already, right, what you can do is you can read the article. So basically, this is the article, right? And then normally, if you want to be part of the conversation, what you do is you copy this link and paste it on your social media page, and then you just post it, correct? But there's no value to you. What if you share this article and you get 1,000 likes or 100 shares? There's no value to you or your brand. So with Parrot, now you can derive value out of it. So instead of copying this article and pasting it on Facebook, you paste it on Parrot here and click Customize Message. What Parrot will do is it will generate the preview of the article and uh, with an option for you to edit the call to action, right? So. Um, you can change the message 
here. So when you edit this, it will change this. Um, when you edit the action link, it will basically redirect readers based on wherever they want, right? Once you're happy with how it looks, you click save. Parrot will generate a parroted link for you, this one. And then you can share that link on Facebook. So the good thing about Parrot is that the links are the same, the preview is the same. The only difference is that when you click on it, so this article, right? When you click on it, it's the article with the call to action. So there's actually reasons for you to share articles right now and leverage on the party content to drive traffic to your particular site, right? Um, so basically, this is what Parrot does. Very simple. Are we, time's up already? Uh, so, uh, yeah, basically that's what Parrot does. Uh, thank you. Any questions from the panel expert? Hi, um, my name's Nat. Uh, so just before I ask, uh, say anything, I should say that whoever tries to give design feedback never comes out being the nice person. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, so before coming here, I tried, uh, I was, you know, Peter, the, the link, so I was just looking at everything. Um, I did not get the concept of the, the product from the website. It was very difficult to, I think there was too much information on the, on the main screen and, and I wasn't very clear even till now what the value is. Um, so I think that's one thing I would say just from the design perspective on the website, it wasn't very clear. I tried the demo, it was a bit more confusing than, uh, it, it, you know, than when I was trying to understand the concept. But you know, just looking at that, I had a few things in mind that I was thinking maybe, maybe they're helpful, but um, on the website, there was no mention of what advantage, what the advantage is to me. There was a mention of you can find the most trending links, but you know I don't get up in the morning thinking what are the most trending links today and how I'm going to use them. So providing context of where I could use them could be interesting as well. Um, more other than that, I think um, again, um, you know, it's probably useful. By the way, who's the target audience? Third party content. Yeah, I kind of get got the feeling now when you explained it from the website. I think that's the only thing I can say that it, it could probably do a better job of explaining what the product is. Yeah. You haven't helped me here at all. Yeah, yeah. So some of my questions. I mean, my, my, my listening to your, your your pitch, it was very much. I didn't actually understand exactly what the problem was that you were solving and who you were solving it for. Yeah. Um, and was this just a really cool product that that was searching for a problem to solve? Um, and as, as an investor, I was sitting here, I was thinking, what is the revenue model? How, where are you going to make your money? What, what, what it, is this something that somebody, is this a nice to have or a must have? So if, if you went out to investors um, and, and you pitched them this, you, you know, the important thing what you've got to figure out is you've got to persuade, you've got to persuade the investors as well as the people you're selling this to that this is something they have got to have because without it, they cannot survive. Uh, and for me, this is just something which is nice to have. But I myself couldn't actually see using it. I look at a lot of the companies I've invested in, and I, I would think yeah, they could use it if, if there was, they could search specifically if there was anything about them, if it was a bit more specific out there in terms of they could search, you know, if there was anything about them or the, the, the sectors that they're in. But, you know, I'm not trying to be tough. I think that what we just, you know, just give straight up feedback. Can I address the... Yeah, sure. So I think there's two parts, right? The product design, right? So uh, we just launched this a month ago. Uh, I think we're really excited because when we launched, uh, we should really have paying customers already. Um, and two of the things that we're working on right now is, uh, yes, the UX, we need a huge improvement. So we're trying to put in case studies uh, from clients, actual case studies, right? How they benefit from it, right? Uh, and to your answer of the uh, pitching the investors, uh, so I'm bearing in mind that this is a uh, product demo, <laughs> two minutes, right? Uh, and I mean, if I want to pitch to investors, the uh, target audience will be, so our paid customers will be corporate uh, government agencies that share the party contact. Uh, that's one. Second thing is social media managers because they share, they do, everyone, business owners is going digital right now, number one. Number two, they rely on content curation and content strategy as part of a traffic acquisition, correct? So Parrot allows you to discover trending content and 
do content research on it. So for example, if you if I'm a travel, let's say I'm Airbnb, right? I'm looking for community related articles to produce, or I'm looking to produce uh, articles around travel, right? I simply search travel and it will show me all the related articles in Singapore that did very well with the keyword travel in it. So for example, uh, the, the, the most rare article would be 10 uh, countries you didn't know you can travel to, right? Because so based on the data, we know that, let's say it gets 100,000 shares. Based on that, what Airbnb can do right now is that, okay, if people like this, I can actually create content, or other content around it. So uh, there's two things right now, right? Target audience, number one is uh, those that share the target content. Second is those that want to do content research. Very, very simple. Uh, and obviously, uh, another thing uh, that we have is the scheduling feature. So if I think head on with Buffer, uh, so basically, uh, it, it is a one pla one stop platform for you to discover trending content, add call to actions to it, schedule it. So very very clear cut. Um, business model is um, it's a SaaS pricing model. So free version allows you up to X amount of searches per day, uh, X amount of links per day. Uh, Pro version unlimited link and unlimited searches. So we're talking with some companies uh, on some licensing so on, and uh, yeah, basically you want to integrate our API. So. Yeah, cool, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so second product is Lively, uh, which is from a team, Tiny Will. From a team, Tiny Will. Um, very small developer shop, two developers. Um, and Jason is going to demo uh, from his phone, which I prefer. I think the majority of the companies that are presenting are actually presenting and demoing right from their phone. Okay, uh, hello guys. Uh, I'm Jason. I'm from a company called Tiny World. We make uh, iOS apps. Uh, and this is one of our latest app. Uh, the app is very, very simple and straightforward. Uh, it converts live photo on the iPhone 6S and 6S Plus to a GIF or movie so that you can share them with other platforms, uh, either Android or Windows Phone or the web. So uh, for those for people who don't have an iPhone 6S, I'm going to talk a bit about the live photo. So Live Photo is a new feature on the latest iPhones. Uh, this is a, a, a photo of my cousin. Uh, from the still image, it's not very interesting. She's doing something, but uh, I don't know what she's doing. So when I press it firmly on my phone, uh, you don't see it, but... Um, okay, yeah. So basically, the, the camera on the iPhone success capture uh, about 1.5 seconds of movie before and after. So what you ended up with uh, a live photo is a, a normal photo and three seconds of movie. Um, the thing is, being Apple, they don't let you share this content outside yeah, iOS and, and Macintosh. So uh, if you want to share this with other device, uh, you can use Lively to convert the movie to a GIF and then share it. Uh, let me show you the app. It's, so when you open it, you see a grid of photos, which is all the live photo, and you can go into one of them. It will show you the preview of the movie, and then you can either export that at the video, or you can tap on the GIF tab here, and this will export as a GIF file, which can be shared. Uh, the feature of Lively, I think, is uh, the peculiar feature, is to have this GIF control when you can manipulate the GIF. Uh, you can speed up to like 2.0, and it go really fast, and you can make it go backward, or you can make her go to the back and then go back, make the GIF loop seamlessly, instead of going from the front to the back and front to the back. And yeah, so, it's very simple, uh, that's it. Um, thanks. 
Um, I have to say, uh, I, I downloaded the app and I actually really like the app. Um, uh, there's only a few things I can really say about it because it's very minimalistic from a design point of view. Uh, you know, it's rather. I, I don't want to talk about the things that I think the app could do because those are just features that you know your users better than me. Um, but one thing was when you tapped on any of the photos, I these these are very very small uh, suggestions here. But when you tapped on the photo, the GIF options was just an icon which. I thought could be better labeled. It's just a cogwheel there, easy to miss. Not not sure what it's for. Uh, that that was the only thing, to be honest. <laughs> it's a simple app. I actually really really like the app. Yeah, thanks. Um, again, again, I've got nothing really that much to actually, actually say. <laughs> <laughs> um, look, it, it's really simple, and if, I, if I'm looking at it from an investor's point of view, um, how, how do I actually scale it? it it's it's probably adding features to it, so you can kind of look at it in terms of um, can you add uh, a, you know different color schemes to it? Can you make it black and white? Can you do those type of things as well on top of it? As an investor, I would say, well, it, it does this. Where else can you actually take it? Is this is this the start, or is there more functionality that you can actually bring into it that uh, would make it exci exciting? And because at the moment. The iPhone 6 is the only one that does this. Other other phones, you know, it, you know, everybody pays for my leader. So is Android suddenly going to be actually doing this as well? And then how can you actually, you, you know, is this? So really, what it comes down to is this something that is relevant today? Is it still going to be relevant in six months' time? You know, and that's something that you would have to actually persuade an investor in, or something that you would have to say, well, it is still relevant. This is how we would grow to it. This is something that we did because we really need it. For, for myself, I want a way to share it with other people. So uh, I'm not really looking for... <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think I'm different from the rest of you guys. I'm not looking for investment for this cafe. <laughs> I don't think we will ever get investment. Uh, there's some feature that I would like to add into that, and we're working on it right now. But it will be as simple as this. I like this app, very simple, very easy to use. Anybody can use it. Um, so actually, I, I also saw you. I think have a, uh, a in-app purchase as well here, right? Yeah. Um, just out of curiosity, because you're not looking for investment, and you did this because you like you wanted this, right? <laughs> so what's your goal with the in-app purchase there? Like, could you could you say you just added it there just to see if you can earn money, or do you have any kind of goal in your mind about that? Ultimately? Uh, yeah, I mean, um, I think the best product is one you make for yourself and you have a real need for it, so you know exactly what will make sense. Um, I had the Apple Chase because I think that this seriously could make money, uh, even though it does for me and my my co father but I think it could make money. And uh, uh, for those you guys didn't know, uh, the app only lets you use to export for three times before it asks you for one ninety nine purchase. So you can free to uh, preview it, but if you want to export it to share, you need to pay one ninety nine after three years. And uh, I think free to use for this kind of app is uh, it makes perfect sense because there's uh, already a million of, of this kind of app on the app store, and being free, uh, I think have a lot with the discovery, so people is more willing to download it uh, rather than a pen app. That's why I went with the app purchase. And. I said I didn't have anything to say about this, but um, in, I also saw in your settings, uh, this is again just from a design perspective, I'm curious really, in your settings you have some tutorials about how you can use extensions along with the app, yeah. right? But when I downloaded it and I played, I, I was playing around with it, I was never told about that anywhere. It's only in the settings that I, like, I, if I wasn't exploring I wouldn't have found it. So is that intentional as well? or? Is there, like, after a certain period of time, people are told, hey, you've been using this app, you know what, you can use extensions as well? Uh, yes, exactly. So after about uh, five or six times you open the app, it's going to pop up say, this comes with extension, do you want to use it? Uh, I'm going to show you the extension and what to, because uh, I want to keep it short and don't want to waste the time. So <laughs> you can select, you can select uh, a lot of photos and with one click, 
you can attract them all to give instead of going through one by one. And what you ended up with uh, six gig. Yeah. Uh, in the photo app doesn't play, but if you share it with somebody, uh, let's say on Facebook, this my code out there. It takes a while because the game is big. Yeah, so, so basically what you ended up is uh, six photos from the live photo that you shared. Alright, thanks so much. And uh, the next up is Jeannie. Where is Adrian? She's in the room. So Jeannie's really cool. It's a, it's a space that I'm quite passionate about, uh, which is uh, messaging slash AI slash sort of conversational commerce. Am I right? Good evening, everybody. So I'm Adrian. I run Genie in Asia Pacific. So what we do is a digital concierge. So let me get that on the way. So that's me, Adrian. And we want to be the service layer over the world. So we don't take this trivially. And uh, like what Peter said, we have a uh, uh, conversation based on on demand, everything pretty much, uh, concierge service. So if you've seen, uh, <coughs> Uh, what Magic and other concierge services does. Uh, well, we take that and we want to place it on everything. We want to be a service layer, and we think that the service layer, what we're doing is the last piece of the tech value chain. Being able to deliver extremely good customer service to people who want to buy stuff, and for businesses to be able to deliver that pretty much instantly. So today, what you get when you go to any e-commerce, any uh, online site, website, you get pretty much unresponsive uh, request fulfillment of whatever you buy or whatever you want, it's pretty unresponsive. And in our view, the, the whole mobile commerce is pretty broken. What we want to do is to take what we built in Genie, a digital, online, conversation-based, concierge service, and place it on a business perspective, of course. We want to place that on every single business. If you have a business that's brick and mortar, you want to sell something, if you have a service, product offering, but we can take what we have in Genie and put it on top of that. We're doing it already on a B2C front, and it's as simple as that, that we have an app that uh, we are on Facebook Messenger, we are on SMS. You can ask us for anything, and if it's physically possible and legal, we'll do it. And we do it pretty much instantly. And we can do that for businesses. We can take what we've done on a B2C front and attach it and put it as a layer on top of any SME. So if you want if you use your computer, if you're on a mobile, wherever you are in the world, if you want food, if you want something orchestrated for you. So it's not just about errand running, it's not just about getting a single item, it's about orchestrating a single, well, uh, an experience for you. That's what we do for our customers. And we plug in businesses to that. Businesses that want to be able to access an on-demand reality, an on-demand economy. And we can plug you into that. All right, so let's, let me jump into a demo. And, this is Genie, and uh, it's spelled a bit weird. It's D J E N E. If, if you're wondering, it's not uh, it's not Genie. Uh, it's Genie. And uh, okay. so, make a wish. We send you an offer. You make a payment, and that's it. So, how easy is it to do? Tap on the wish, and I'll just go for a dinner for Eden's party. I send a message. And within five minutes, you get a response back to you with an offer. And you hit a payment button. With that payment, you confirm your order and we'll get it to you. So in this case, we're partnered with another company who does express delivery. And we can get you your chakra tail in about 90 minutes, anywhere, anywhere in Singapore. All right, so jumping right back. So. And today, actually, and I don't know how we are for time, but I'm, I'm just announcing actually that we're launching a brand new product that's an offshoot of Genie, which is an executive, a dedicated Genie just for you. So on the B2C front, if you need a personal assistant to replace 24-7 uh, your personal assistant as a boss or as a team, you can attach Genie to your team to run errands and to execute things for you. All right, and that's it. Simple as that. That's Genie. Thank you.
Thank you very, very much for that. So, I mean, I guess the, for my, my question is, is that, so are you focusing, you're focusing now on B2, kind of B2B to C? That's right, yeah. You, you know, um, so what is your route to market? How, who, how are you actually getting to, you know, you've got, you've got a product, so how do you actually get out to market? What, what's your thinking on that? So uh, a lot of what we're doing in the past three, uh, few months that we've been operating in Singapore is to actually go to businesses and activate their user base. So a lot of businesses with uh, customers or uh, with actual users want to monetize on top of that, uh, we, we provide them the data. So it's pretty much B2B for now, and, uh, but in the meantime, we're also rolling out B2C campaigns that are trickling out in the market. So it's on two fronts really, but it's primarily, if, if I had to choose a primary focus, it's B2B first. Um, I actually downloaded the app earlier. I tried it, and you know, um, I have a lot of detail, a lot of things I've written down, but I can pass them on to you later with the hope of it being helpful. But um, there are a few things. Um, so the concept of a personal assistant to me is it comes with um, a personal experience as well, right? It's something I can, you know, if you say this is a personal experience, I can just chat with it. I can say, hey, I need this, I need this. So it's very friendly, it's very, it's it's not convoluted, it's not it's not something cryptic that I need to understand a lot. Um, so what I would say is going by that um, kind of you know, philosophy, I think the, the interface of the app was actually very, very cryptic. Uh, it wasn't very helpful. There's a lot of icons without really, uh, <laughs> that's cool, without really explaining what the icons were. Uh, if you go back to the first screen of the app, for instance, right, yeah. the main screen, um, if you go back to the previous screen, here, when I was shown the, the first screen, I remember the first thing was something like, you have no wishes, <laughs> right? That was the first thing that I saw when I entered the app, which was a very negative thing to start me with. Of course I have wishes. You just didn't know about them, or you know. Um, you can maybe turn that into an action and say, do you have a wish for us or something? Uh, you know, that's up to you guys. Uh, but that was something negative. That was the first thing that I saw after I did. I, you know, I said next, next, next. Then I saw the first thing. I said, "It said you have no wishes." And then there was no call to action on that screen. I didn't know there were none of these conversations. There was nothing else. The icons don't have any labels. Didn't explain. When I figured out, I can tap on something and try to enter my wish. Uh, it kept saying you haven't filled in your details in the settings screen. Now, I have no idea where the setting screen is. I don't know what details are missing. But these are very, very specific things I know. You know, these can be handled. Uh, but I think hopefully that's, that's a little helpful. The, the second thing, which again, going back to that personal assistant thing that, you know, that feeling of, of it being friendly and helpful. When I first started, that went to the, to the website and then downloaded the app. The, uh, you know, if you go back to your tutorial, if you go here, right, it says make a wish, it's free to ask us anything you need help with. Okay, cool, if you go next. Yeah, our offer, we will present you with an offer. Okay, fine. So it's, it's going in that direction of saying, yeah, yeah, you can ask us anything and, and you know, we, we, uh, we can make it, you know, happen for you. Then there's the payment and wishes through. I think the payment part actually could maybe be taken away from the onboarding because what's essential for me at that point is, what can the app do for me? It says make a wish, but it's really too, you know, high level, I, I don't know. I, I did actually ask it a few things, but I still haven't received a response. So, um, but I did ask for the difficult things as well. I said, world peace and a cab right back home. <laughs> <laughs> you know, of course, cheesy. Of course, cheesy. Um, but it was just, just those things. Also, when I sent a message, there was no indication where the mes message was accepted by the system. There was no acknowledgement. There was no feedback when I get a response. The response came in later. So there are a few of those things. Another thing I would mention, which might be a pattern in the next uh, feedback as well. It, uh, when I opened the app, one of the first things it said is, uh, can I send you a notification? But it didn't explain why it needed to do that, even before I put in a, put in a wish. So that could be another beat, just on that friendly, you know. You know on that, the other con slightly confusing thing for me is you talk about wishes, then you talk about being a personal assistant. Right. And that, it's kind of two different, I would never ask my, not well, I have a personal system, but if I did, I wouldn't ask them to make my wish come true. <laughs> 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 you, you, you know, so in terms of the language, it can be quite confusing. In terms of, if you need, do you need, to, you know, a personal system, I would think more of a need that needs to be, needs, you know, a problem that needs to be solved, more than a wish of a nice thing to actually happen. It's more, 
that this is actually a, a service that's actually going to help you do something. Not, it's not going to be a wish of you know world peace or whatever else along those lines. So you might actually just think that, if, especially when you go towards the consumer side, it can actually get slightly confusing. Yeah, right, yeah. You know, so that, that's that, that's the you know carrying on from the point that's just been made. Yeah, and, um, no, and, and thank you for that because a lot of a lot of what we're doing is so customer centric, and, and I think it's important to get language right. So thank you, thank you for those points. Uh, another thing that we're doing also to make sure that this is a, a much smoother journey, and this is a version two of the app, and uh, we we'll totally admit that this is not where it needs to be. Uh, but we're doing a lot of defrosting activities together with businesses to really want people up to the idea of starting a conversation with us. And it's true the, the, the context of a conversation that we get to know you a lot better. So uh, maybe today, we know that you want world peace and you want a taxi. We'll fix the taxi for you. World peace, you know, we'll, we'll find out what you want. And part of the service, uh, you know, is to understand the need, right? Maybe world peace to you is, is maybe donating to a cause that you believe in. And for us, it's, it's down to our agents, and this is something that we treat very seriously. Uh, to get our agents to understand how to tease out the name. Uh, that's actually a lot of soft skills that happen, I think, off offline, and I guess it's non tech. And the stuff that's not really scalable because you, we need to train every single agent. Uh, but that's the dream, right? We, we want to build a, a community of agents, genius, who can do this and, um, and deliver a very personal service. So, but yes, thank you. 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 I'm waiting for my flowers. <laughs> uh, so the next app I've been using a little bit for the past week, weeks, uh, it's called Meet App uh, by Roman. I'm sure you can tell you about it. It was very meta with product on to the app as well. Yeah. It's something about events. Hello everyone. A lot of people. Good job, Peter. <laughs> yeah, uh, so uh, Meetup is uh, basically a simple way to um, search events around you and follow where your friends are going or influencers that you care about, which events they're going to. Uh, so let's get to the app itself. Uh, there go. Right, so uh, it's pretty simple. So um, right away we can see the following screen, uh, the events that are happening around me and um, where my friends are going to. Uh, so, Product Hunt, unsurprisingly, a lot of people going there. Uh, CSS Hunt, Michael, a lot of parties, events, uh, Arthate. Yeah, so uh, you can follow, serve them by um, start time, by popularity. A lot of people going to Geek Brunch. Um, yeah, <laughs> obviously. Um, yeah, event tales. But, um, uh, you can uh, search events. Uh, we have them classified based on different categories. We do that automatically, and we uh, it's not only Facebook events, if anyone would think that. Uh, we use Facebook basically every single event everywhere, like every event, uh, every. Um, you can search for things. Let's search, for example, for um, product hunt. Surprise. Yeah. <laughs> uh, product hunt. Oh, obviously. So, um, yeah, we can see who's going there. Mm, we have familiar faces there. Um, get directions to the location. Oh, this will be by car, pretty interesting. Uh, okay. um, you can as well um, create events, whether public or private, so you can uh, create like a public hunt meetup next time, uh, or you can have a private dinner with your friends and send a personal invite. Um, yeah, basically that's it. Thanks. Questions? Questions? Give it a try, download. Thanks. That looks cool. Um, so, again, I downloaded the app before I came here because I wanted to see uh, how it works. And there was, a, there was a reason why I downloaded this app because I, I think I've seen a lot of apps try to do something very similar over the last five years. Uh, in Singapore, if anyone's been around here for five, the last five years, you've probably seen a bunch of companies from Singapore. Some companies really tried to be big and then it didn't go anywhere. I won't take names. Um, but good products, though. Uh, you know, good good tries. So, so I was curious if it would work, right? And uh, but that's that was my intent. You know, I said, okay, I'm going to download the app. Uh, just purely again from a design perspective, I thought the the onboarding was quite confusing. I thought it didn't really tell me anything before. The first thing I saw was enter your phone number. With that, before anything else, it was a keypad with phone number. So you know. Without really telling me why you need my phone number, it asked me that. So it was, usually I wouldn't do that. Um, and you would, I think, 
Uh, if you look at you know apps out there, you would see a drop in retent uh, users signing up there. And after I did that, I had to wait a bit, put in my phone number, and then it asked me to sign up with Facebook. So I said, wait, I already gave you my phone number. I thought I signed up. Then with Facebook and so on, I went in. So one thing was it, the app actually didn't make it clear at all what it was about. It didn't tell me what I was going to do once I was in. The onboarding didn't make it clear at all. Um, once I was in, um, there were a few things I think a bit more detail. Maybe I can give you that feedback later. For instance, the first thing I was shown once I signed up, look, I saw products up there. I saw a few other friends' meetups there. And then when I, I signed up, they all disappeared. I didn't know how to find it at all. It was behind the find friends and such and such. So that was the interface feedback. But the other key thing was I'm still wondering why I would download this app and use it when all it's doing, to me, it seems like at least, it's doing is pulling in these events from Facebook. I've already got Facebook and it's already telling me about these events. Sometimes it can actually be noisy. Facebook can be noisy about, oh, my friends are going here, so why would I download this app? That's you know really my basic you know, question here. Uh, so basically, um, one of the uh, ideas behind it is, in terms of the phone number, it's because we the initial idea was to make it really personal. One of the things that we noticed that a lot of people would use Google Calendar, for example, to schedule their work events, but not the personal events. And no one really creates like a really casual, fast catch-ups over Facebook because the UI there for uh, event creation is pretty cumbersome, and everyone feels a lot of pressure to add like the cover picture to the event. And if they do not do that, they feel that it's like no way, no reason for me to create an event in Facebook, right? Um, so I do agree with you on the onboarding part. That's still to be proved. That's not the kind of core value position of the app. Uh, in terms of the value itself, is like even though you have quite a lot of events, invites on Facebook, uh, you still, like a lot of people that I talk to myself, we get like just swamped by the 20 invites a day to events, especially those who are younger, like those who are like in their college, there's who are going to parties, um, going to like social events, uh, networking, like a lot of invites and you cannot figure out what's like, which is important, what is not. Uh, another thing is um, like, if you want to search for a specific event, uh, you cannot do that on Facebook. You can. Uh, a little bit, but it's not. It's going to show you like a lot of pages, a lot of people, but events not not going to be there as as prominent as with, with in our case. Because we just want to focus on events only. If you want to search for a certain specific name, like you hear that okay, uh, I don't know, Tiesto is coming to town, and you do not know which venue that is or uh, what time, what date is going to be on. If you search on uh, Google. Uh, it's going to yield you a ton of results with Tiesto's official website. If you search on Facebook, it's going to be his page, but not the event around you. Uh, but I, I still don't think I go to Facebook to look for events. Like, it doesn't, I want to go to a concert for a, by a band. Facebook wouldn't be where I go look for it. Yeah, Maybe. you go here. Sorry. <laughs> You go to do that. You, you can do that here? Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's yeah. like all events. It's, it's not only Facebook. Right. We just scrape all events that exist. Like, so it's uh, concerts, it's uh, casual meetups, uh, everything. Yeah, that was okay to me. Okay, uh, yeah. That's okay. Good to know. I mean, so in regards to the product itself, I'm just sitting here thinking, okay, where can this, where, where can this be taken? You know, as you said, this is just a startup. So, are you going to make it a possible? You know, because otherwise, I'm like, what is the business model behind this um, to actually then take it to the next level? So, if you're saying, well, you're, you're scraping all the details to get all these events, there's no point for a lot of them just being able to see what the events are. Are you then going to be allowing people to actually buy the tickets straight from your app? Eventually. You know, is that is that where you're thinking you're you're going to go on it? Because otherwise, I'm I'm thinking here, what, what's the point really? It's a nice to have. Uh, I, I, I don't see much of a revenue model. Nobody's going to pay to have this. So you've got to think of somewhere else to actually bring in the revenue. And the only way is, is that if you kind of like, in a way, do a reverse affiliate model, is where you actually say, well, look, we'll make it easy for you to actually buy your tickets. Rather than having to go to each individual site, you can just actually come to us and you can say, I want to go to that event, that event. I'll have all my tickets and become, a bit, I guess, like an event right or something like that, where you can actually get the tickets. It, otherwise, it becomes a bit messy. I, I don't. Yeah. I, I just see it as a kind of a one-trick pony. I just don't know where it's going to go next. Uh, yeah. Thanks. Uh, so yeah, no one's going to pay for Instagram either. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so um, the point, the, the point is like it really applies to different demographics. So for people who are older, they want to stay at home. Uh, for those who are a bit younger, they want to go out and socialize. And then on Friday evening, when they're bored, they want to know what's happening. 
Uh, and Facebook does not always help you that, by the way, like this one-stop shop to figure out like where are the where my friends are going. If you don't care about where your friends are going, you just can search for something specific either by typing in or by category. Uh, in terms of monetization, we really have three uh, revenue channels. One of them, we can talk about them in detail. One of them is obviously ticket sales eventually, uh, but that's like that's not what it is about. Like there are too many too many uh, companies that focus on ticket sales. We do not want to do that. That's just like an, for us, ticket sales is really like nice to have. Uh, not really nice to have, but like something that we just have to or kind of provide. But that's not the main thing. Uh, there are two other uh, ways to to get revenue from it. One of them is already been happening for about a year uh, with this uh, product that we've been running. Um, yeah, we can talk about them if you'd like. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Questions? Oh, really good questions. Yep. Yeah, thanks so much. Thanks, Peter. Thank you. We have a very uh, serious panel grilling all these uh, all these products. Uh, the next startup, which is another sort of space that's heating up super fast, uh, Mimetic.ai. It's a it's one of the rare AI uh, products being built uh, in Singapore. If it is the only one, I think. Actually. Good evening. Before we get stuck in, quick show of hands. How many of you take at least three meetings a week? Okay. Five or more? Okay. Ten or more? Okay. Great. Would it shock you if I told you that you spend up to six working weeks a year just scheduling these meetings? So that's just sending out the initial email, going back and forth about who's free, when they're free, when we can meet, uh, sending out the calendar invites, and then, you know, because life happens, having to reschedule those meetings as well. Sound familiar? This takes up a lot of your time. Can you get this time back? Fortunately, you can. We're Mimetic and we've created an AI, we've built an AI personal assistant. How does it work? You send an email as you normally would to the guys that you want to meet. Peter, let's meet up next week. And then you copy your assistant, who is just an email address, and you say, Evie, who is our assistant, can you find the time for Peter and I to meet? And then Evie contacts Peter and says, Peter, province free, couple of time slots next week, do any of these work for you? And then Evie goes through the process of negotiating with Peter, coming to a common time slot, and then automatically updating my calendar and sending out the calendar invites to Peter. So that's just one email that I've sent, and I'm not involved in everything else that happens after that. That goes on between my assistant Evie and Peter. I know what you're thinking, right? You're thinking, great. <laughs> <laughs> but here's how we're different. Evie is not an email plugin. Evie is not a whiteboard that tells people, these are the times that you're free, pick a slot. Evie reads and writes emails. Evie understands what you're saying at a very deep, semantic level. Evie interacts with me and everybody else who I interact with like a real person. In fact, if you don't tell them, funny story, when I reached out to Peter a month ago to meet up, I copied the EV, and then when I, and then, you know, we got the meeting set up, Peter thought, how posh are these guys? They're a startup and they have secretaries to set up the meetings. So if you don't tell anyone that EV is a machine, they shouldn't be able to tell either. And best of all, it's an ad-free experience. You don't have to download anything. If it's just an email address, the premium version for you to kick around and play with is ev at but the paid version is really 
uh, it can be anything you want. It can be Michael at pi.co. It, it could be any assistant name at your domain. So then, for you, what does that mean? That means no more going back and forth with people, trying to figure out time slots. And if, as we all have friends, don't respond to emails, you don't have to keep track of that because Evie will follow up and chase them down for a response. And finally, Evie learns your preferences over time. So if we notice that your uh, patterns in your calendar, like no meetings, you tend not to have meetings before 10 a.m. or nothing after 5 p.m. or 6 p.m., then Evie will uh, schedule within those parameters. So that's us. Uh, we're in private beta right now, so you can try signing up at uh, Mimetic.ai. Uh, we'd love it if you use it, abuse it, and, but also give us feedback on what you think is working, what is not working, so that we'll respond. We're a small team, so we will definitely respond. Uh, in terms of the future, uh, personal assistants do more than just scheduling emails. There are a lot that they do. And the great thing about the consumer internet is that the services for everything these days. Anything you want, you can find a service good for you. But that, unfortunately, that also leaves you feeling a little bit like this guy. <laughs> so don't you just love it when it's raining outside and you need a cab and you fire your Comfort Delgro app and it crashes because of the server load? So then you go to Uber and there's a 4x surge pricing. <laughs> and then you go to Grab Taxi and they show you all the cab drivers in the area who won't take your booking. <laughs> so, I think the future is about me just telling the machine what I want done, and the machine figuring out the best way to get it done. So we've got some fun things planned for next year. Stay tuned. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to make this real simple. Uh, brilliant presentation. Uh, can you send me uh, access to your visa, please? <laughs> you know, it, I get the problem. You know, I, I, it, it, the great thing is you actually led me down the path. So I'm talking a bit about the presentation more than the actual uh, the, the product because it, it's actually really good. You know, in the sense of my, my, my thinking was being, because this is another fucking scheduling thing. You know, I've been looking for the right one for ages, and I still haven't found one. Um, so it was really nice that you actually led me down that path and you actually answered it. My, 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 but the question I still have is, does it actually, is it really that different from what else is out there? But you've, you've interested me as, as an, you know, it always makes me easier to, to make an investment decision if I can actually think, yeah, this is something that I can actually use myself to actually solve a major issue for me. Um, and uh, so, yeah, so please do pass, uh, let, let me on to the beta. Best feedback ever. <laughs> um, so there's, I've got two pieces of feedback here um, and a question. Um, so again, Peter said, look at the UI and you know just uh, critique it. And so there are a few things from um, the UI when I signed up. Um, you can show the screenshots here, but I'll just try to. You know, I think people might get lost a bit, but I, I, I'll try to be. Uh, you know, I'll try to summarise. Uh, again, I've been saying this. I think in a few feedback, uh, in a few for the, in the feedbacks for a few apps. Um, when I launched the app, the first thing that the app asked is, "Can I send you notifications?" Without really telling me why, right? So I think it's just that's my first knee-jerk reaction. There is going to be no. It's not going to be everyone's reaction, but it's going to be a pretty damn high percentage of people who say no. So try to explain. I would say why you're asking for these permissions. Um, and also, when I was signing up, there was actually a lot of things that OD asked me permission for. To give me that, you know, just to help me schedule, it did ask me for a lot of things. Being a bit technically oriented, you know, I kind of know why they, why it was needed. But it wasn't clear to me, you know, it did present good reasons. But the, the most crucial thing, the most interesting thing to me here is, when it did try to explain, it actually made me more paranoid with the explanation. Because it was very technical and it said, I'm going to store your information on my server, and that was it, kind of like, you know, something there. So I was like, well, that's exactly what I don't want you to do, right? So it was, it's very specific, it's very specific to the UI, which can be changed easily. Um, but that was, that was my experience when I was signing up. 
And then they, it threw me a curveball when I got the email after I signed up to actually, you know, it's like verify your email. Throughout the entire onboarding, it said PV. When I got the email, it said Mantech. So I was like, why is Mantech sending me email? PV just said, I'm going to take your data, store it on the server, and I'm getting an email from a completely different company. That's the first experience I had. So it was really, really not good, you know, even though I was like, I'm going to go ahead, but it really pissed me off at that point. But again, small things that can be fixed easily, right? Uh, and, and then, yeah, there was one more thing that the form, I think you've probably looked at it if you've shown it to someone. It's the one form that I've seen that, that really blew me away. Uh, because it had, it asked me for my name, middle name, family name, but prefix and suffix. We're trying to make the form smaller. So I might be sounding very harsh, but, uh, you know, it was, it, 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 I'm sounding harsh because it, it provided me with these easy things that I can pick on. But, okay, going away from the, just the UI, there's one thing. I like the concept that it was trying to help me by making email uh, meeting scheduling easy. And I like, you had one point in your slides as well, that no more email ping pong. I actually don't think it does. I just tried it a little. Maybe, maybe I didn't catch that, but it's only making it easier for the one person who's trying to organize it. So I said, I'm, I want to organize an email. But then I was you know, trying to say, I'm not available at this time, I'm not available at this time. There was still a lot of email ping pong. So email uh, meeting scheduling is between someone who's trying to organize it and other people who that person's trying to organize it with. It maybe made that me sending an email easy, but I think it, it annoyed everyone else on the other side because it kept going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, right? So if I don't create a problem for everybody else, how would I make money? <laughs> so you've got the app, your life's simple, yeah. you send one email and it's taken care of. If they, those guys want as simple an existence, they should, uh, they should subscribe to the service as well. Because then their systems would just talk to each other and figure it out. I don't think that's how something works. You make clear problems in the end of that you pay for it, but resolve it. Really? Okay. okay. Well, that's good. Okay, well, thank you. So, on your uh, UI feedback, good news is we're deprecating the app. We want the technology to disappear. Mm -hmm. It just needs to be like yeah, you had a second feed. Yeah. yeah, so that was a little bit clumsy, yeah. fully understood, but we're deprecating that and we're moving towards not having an application, just email, copy your system like you would a human secretary and have it sorted out. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right, the last one. Uh, save the best for last. Uh, the company called Lomotive. Anyone heard of them? They seem to have quite a bit of traction. Secretly, they're very humble. I met their founder, Paul, who is currently in the Valley, uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, and I was intrigued because it was a product I really haven't heard about that much, uh, and it's a team that has been cracking at it for quite a while, iterating on the product, uh, being very passionate about the space, and they seem to do really well. So, um, yeah, come on up and show us what you're working on. Hi guys, I'm Steve from Lomotive. And basically what we do is uh, we do a, we are behind the app that makes you allows you to create mini music videos out of anything from a camera roll. So like Peter said, we launched about a year back and we have 2 million users, mostly in the US, and they're creating a video at a rate of about 1 to 2 locomotive videos every second. And this is how you use it. Um, you just hit start. And you select your video. So I've already prepared some clips here. And these are actually shot by our real user. And now you can use any music from the iTunes store, um, including Billboard hits. And that's all I'm going to use this. Okay, I'm going to give you a song and use it. And what Lomotive does is that it actually merges it into a mini music video based on a magical algorithm that pieces your clips to music. 
And it's not exactly like one every second, but it's actually paced as if it's at the back of the life. Okay, so that's what we have. Um, you can also do some things like uh, change the format, resize, sorry, it's a bit hard to navigate all. about Motive is that basically we are the first app to give you access to user-generated content called Motives and this is uh, our beta and so how a user might add Motives to a video is that uh, if she's telling a story about Autumn she can actually add nice scenic shots um, so I'll just pick like the story is a lot about eaves and, and all this so. Like Instagram, Facebook, you know, the usual effects. Yep, and that's about it. Thank you. I mean, the first thing I've got to say is just looking at that, it's very clean. Um, and it looked really easy to use. Um, even though I invest in technology, I, I'm an absolute technophobe. Um, and I always get frightened by, by, by this, you know, putting, using videos and adding music to it is that actually could be quite a daunting thing. Um, and you just make it look really simple. So as a product, it, it, for me, that, that, that works because whilst you and the majority of the other people in the audience love technology, the majority of people out there are still kind of not used to it and not comfortable with it. Does this work across like Android, Apple, all phones, or is it just very much uh, for, for Apple? Or? Mm, you only learn for iOS and mobile. Right. You don't learn for iOS. Okay, um, so I dump <laughs> and and I, I do I do have a lot of apps. Um, and you know the app store told me, hey, this is an app that allows you to edit, uh, add music to videos. I was like, great, download the app, tap on the tap on the icon, and the first thing the app said is, can I send you notifications? <laughs> Again, right? So and I can get. I was like, why does an app that's putting music onto videos sending me notifications? Uh, I, this is a pet peeve, you know. I'm running against it. Just just let your users know why you need permission to access these things. There's a reason why iOS is making it difficult, so let your users know because otherwise there is a big chance they would say no, All right? So that was one of the things. Um, uh, then um, after that, I think the starting point, I wasn't too sure of the start button because I wasn't sure what it meant. Like I thought I already started the app when I pressed on the app icon, right? Uh, I'm trying to leave it plain. Thing, just to kind of make uh, you know put my point across. But then when, once I press start, it, you know if you tap on, tap on start, uh, it gives me these options, which was kind of clear when I press all videos. Now there's a very technical thing that probably your technical team needs to solve. There's a lot of the videos shown here. I had no idea why it was showing me these videos because they didn't seem to be ordered in any chronological order. They were videos that I'd taken like three years ago, suddenly right on the top after like three videos that I'd taken yesterday. So it was weird. And also, because some of them were really old videos, I tapped on them and nothing, the app just didn't work because probably they hadn't been synced down from iCloud because I'd switched on, you know, save space on my phone. Um, so, 
my first experience was it just didn't work and the ad didn't tell me what was going on. It was just a blank video. Eventually I figured out, okay, I need to do this, this, this. You know? uh, now, the second thing that Michael pointed out that it was actually very easy. Once you selected the videos, you went to the second next screen. Uh, here, this was great as well. I picked a song. Um, I was actually surprised. I looked for Benny Hill theme song. <laughs> and it was there. I was like, fantastic. So when I went to the... So just a small thing here. At the top right, you've been leading all the screens in the top right. Just proceed by tapping on the top right in a bunch of the screens. Here, it was suddenly it would cancel everything that I was doing. So I wasn't looking at it and I tapped it and I was like, wait a minute, that's not how it is uh, supposed to be. So that might not be the best place to say can put your cancel button. But once I went to the next screen, which seems so impressive right now, and it was like, That was, that was entertaining. So the next screen actually really threw me off because I wrote down in my notes that the, the editing screen seems overloaded and, and seems like there's a lot of things going on there. I think once you know what you're doing, it's easy to, to do things on that screen. But when I first went there, it was just a lot of things, a lot of controls. There was filters up there, but there was a button at the bottom saying filters on or off. So there's a lot of things going on there. There was coach screens, coach marks, you know, when, I, when you first come to that screen, there's a little tutorial that tells you, you can do this, you can do this, you can do this, you can do this. I just said skip. And because I said skip, every, the interface was so cryptic, I, I didn't know you could drag things around. So I would actually say, get rid of the coach marks if you can. Tell people what they can do when you think they will need to. Don't give me, here's the complicated interface and here's 10 things you can do with it. I'm not going to remember any of those. Just let me into, get me let, get me into the interface, you know. Just, just drop me somewhere where there's simple things I can do, and as I go along the path, make it explain it more and you know add more things. Um, I think that was that was really it. The the thing, I guess, the last point which I can say quickly is when I was editing my video, uh, at the bottom there was a button that said Instagram or Lomotive, which I had no idea. I think this is another thing I've seen. You know, uh, we, we work with clients as well, this is a lot of things, oh, yeah, Lomotif means it's a format that's not square, but I have no idea what that means, that's what I interpreted after using it, right? Lomotif is something that's not square, uh, but I don't know, so maybe not, maybe use simpler words rather than, you know, uh, something that relates to that. Uh, other than that, I think it was, it was cool, yeah, interesting, thanks. Designers so strict. <laughs> Thank you guys for uh, for your feedback for letting us um, access your brain a little bit. How you think? Uh, thanks to all the presenters for their amazing products. I think there's a all of them have a very very cool uh, space that they're operating in. A good opportunity. Um, and as usual, go and blend, meet up each other. And if you're looking for co-founders or product managers, there's a whole bunch here. Uh, there's a lot of usual suspects. There's a lot of new faces. If you have a cool product that you're working on, let me know. Uh, I can post you guys on Product Hunt if you're interested to get some extra traction. Um, and yeah, I hope to see you in two months for the next event. Thanks, guys.